I was recently lucky enough to actually be able to get my hands on the 2020 iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch model for that matter, and I really liked it. It reminded me exactly of why I love to use my 2018 iPad Pro so much for many different tasks like video editing and drawing, content consumption and things of the like. But that's exactly the issue. It's not all that different from my 2018 model, spoiler alert, because the software supported by the iPad OS just doesn't really benefit that much from the incredible boost of the new chip or the new cameras for that matter. But let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's have a proper discussion right here. For more great content just like this, just make sure to subscribe and then turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. Also leave a like and a comment down below with all of your thoughts on this video. And while you're at it, I always leave affiliate links down below in the description as well. But make sure that you check out Lusterbook so you can find the best deals on all of that tech that you're shopping for. It's a simple browser extension that helps you make the best purchasing decision. And lastly, don't forget to check out my merch store if you're into some monochrome clothing like everything I'm wearing right here. So with that said, links to everything down below. The exterior design is going to consist of aluminum and it is going to be the exact same thickness as before and with the glass front, obviously for the display portion. The iPad Pro is as sleek and beautiful as ever, looking especially good in the Space Gray variant as per usual. And this particular iPad is quite massive. I'm a short guy, in case that matters to you. So this iPad feels and even looks massive in my hands, but it is still a, a significant size difference from the 11 inch model, which is the one I currently own. The build is identical, I know it was identical. The only physical change really comes in the camera system. This iPad features a 2732 by 2048 resolution display, which is significantly higher than your typical 1440p displays, uh, but it is still a far cry from 4K. However, on the 12.9 inch model in particular, you just won't find a better display on the tablet at all. It's still a 120 hertz screen that looks absolutely beautiful regardless of what you're doing on it. Like browsing the web feels incredibly smooth, watching content is incredibly enjoyable, but most importantly, uh, producing content especially is really cool on this display. It's absolutely wonderful, just like how it is on the 2018 model. And the speakers still appear to be the exact same as before, and that's not necessarily a complaint either because these still sound fantastic for tablet speakers, probably still the best in the business. They are great for watching content and listening to music, but obviously not the best for creating content or doing actual audio monitoring, in case you were wondering. And now, in terms of specs, this iPad did get a significant boost to its internals, however, and that's one thing that makes it somewhat special here. Here, you've actually got an A12Z Bionic chip, which is certainly more powerful than the 2018 model's A12X Bionic chip on paper. Even though it is like technically just, just another variant of that same chip. But this time, they all seem to come with 6 gigs of RAM, instead of one having 4 gigs, and if you get a more expensive model that having 6 gigs, all of them seem to have 6 gigs of RAM regardless of which model you end up going for. And the battery life has been about the same all throughout as well, so there isn't really too much to boast about here. But the cameras are an improvement, so let's go ahead and talk about it. And now this year, we've actually got dual rear-facing cameras on the back, one of them being a 12 megapixel f 1.8 wide-angle camera, and that can shoot uh, videos at up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and the other one is a 10 megapixel f2.4 ultra wide camera that shoots at up to 1080p at 240 frames per second with electronic image stabilization. And the cameras are quite nice and they do have a decent low light performance, but do still expect some grain, especially when looking at it from this giant screen. You got a 7 megapixel f2.2 front facing camera that allows you to record at up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Kind of hoping for an upgrade here, since the cameras are mostly the same uh, from last gens for the exception of the addition of the ultra wide angle lens. However, I literally never use the rear facing cameras, only the front facing one for video calls and things of the like. So the upgrade really would have mattered a lot more if they had done it on the front facing camera instead, in my opinion, at least. However, let us go ahead and talk about the fun stuff drawing performance. Just like before, if you wanted a good tablet for drawing that you can travel with, then this is a great device for doing just that. There is very low latency when using the Apple Pencil, and you can create some pretty sick art with it. And because of this refresh rate also, it feels incredibly smooth to draw on it, and the experience feels identical to drawing on the 2018 model, which again, I have to remind you, 
has been very good. Editing performance is also very solid. Editing on a tablet was something that we never thought possible until the Surface laptops came out, but even editing on those hasn't been a great experience per se. However, in the iPad Pro, things are a little bit different. So using Adobe Premiere Rush here, I was able to edit a 4K video without any kind of issues. I would just use the Apple Pencil for controls, essentially. I didn't connect the most with it at all, as I'm used to editing with the Apple Pencil. And performance was always consistent and very smooth. I'm very comfortable editing on the iPad Pro. We didn't have LumaFusion on this tablet in particular. I only have it on my older 2018 model, but since I already know that it works so well on the 2018 model, I have no doubt that the more powerful 2020 model can handle it as well. The experience of editing, however, is still identical to editing on the 2018 model, to be completely honest. And I think I've made my point by now. The 2020 iPad Pro is an amazing device in every sense of the word. However, right now, I don't think that there's a way to really push this tablet beyond everything it's already capable of right now. And while you can do a lot of great things with it, and it is more powerful than the 2018 model, for sure, it just it didn't feel any different to use the 2020 model versus the 2018 model. Until the apps are there to really push the iPad Pro, then I don't see a reason to upgrade if you already have the 2018 model. But if you don't have either, then you might as well get the 2020 model since uh, there will most likely be Pro apps that can really benefit from the CPU upgrade in the future, even if that's not necessarily the case right now. So that has been my verdict. And if you're interested in purchasing the iPad Pro, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description, as well as links to Luster in case you needed a point of comparison. If you end up using Luster, then it's going to scour the web for like reviews and things of the like, and it's going to help you find other types of alternatives to accessories for the iPad Pro and headphones and things of the like in case you're looking at some pretty cool accessories for it and it's going to help you find sales as well. So if you end up signing up, I do get a small commission that does help me out quite a bit. And even if you end up using my affiliate links, I still get a pretty good commission going. So I would appreciate it if you use those as well. And make sure to follow me on Twitch in case you're interested in the most relaxing streams on earth. I like to stream there every Friday and Saturday. I would love to see you down there to answer any questions you might have about the iPad Pro or anything else tech related or if you just wanted to stop by and chill. Also, make sure to follow me on both Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date with any updates. So with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.